What is going on? John Middlecoff, three and out podcast here. Fresh off Monday Night Football. Chicago Bears blow out the New England Patriots. But first, my friends at Turtle Box, baby. Turtle Box is the loudest, most portable, and truly waterproof Bluetooth speaker on the market. It fe- I mean, look at this thing. If, if you're watching this on video, this thing is the best. It's big. It's loud. Great battery. Ultra long battery life. Uh, and here's the thing. My friends at Turtle Box are now offering pro and collegiate team color combinations. You're a Patriot fan. You're a Bears fan. You want to get color combinations. So when you're barbecuing with your buddies, when you're hanging out, now it's getting a little chillier depending on where you live. You're inside, watch some games. You want to have some beats on in the background. Cannot recommend this enough. Use the promo code JOHN, that's J-O-H-N. Get $20 off your first order as well as free shipping. This thing is awesome. I've been using it now for months. Again, go to TurtleBoxAudio.com. Enter the promo code JOHN for $20 off your first order and free shipping. That's TurtleBoxAudio.com. Promo code JOHN for the best outdoor speaker out there. Let's dive in to a little football. <clears throat> okay, little Monday Night Football recap. We had Blowout City. The Patriots just dis- got destroyed by the Chicago Bears, 33-14. And let's start with New England. And I, I guess it would have been on Friday's podcast, I gave somewhat of an apology. And or, or sometime last week, and, and I realized like betting against Belichick, you get it better be careful, right? No matter how talented his team is, he is such a good coach that he's never going to win four or five games. And I thought there was a chance at the start of the season they were a five and twelve season or five and five and twelve team, and they were going to have that type of season. I was wrong. They are not a five and twelve team. That much is clear. <clears throat> now here's the thing, though. And this has been a knock on the Patriots over the years of their drafting, right? They're top-to-bottom talent. They're difference-making players. They're Pro Bowl-level guys. And the last two weeks, they feasted on two guys who are bottom five starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Jared Goff and Jacoby Brissett. And here's the other thing. Jacoby Brissett and Jared Goff cannot move. So guys like that who turn the ball over a lot, and are zero threat to run around, pretty easy for the greatest defensive coach ever to game plan against. And he eviscerated both guys. Well, tonight, Justin Fields, who is, I would say, pound for pound, one of the better athletes in the league, is a tough guy to game plan against. Now, he's a hit or miss player as a passer still. You saw there was a ball tonight where Troy's like, put a little air under it. He's still got a long way to go, even though we'll get into his supporting cast. He, it's, it's just one of those guys that, and this is what we talked about in the quarterback drafting segment earlier this week. Like when you draft guys really high, I like you to have different pitches. I like you to have high ceilings. And if that guy ever figures it out, his ceiling as a runner is clearly elite because he's one of the fastest quarterbacks we've ever seen. And I think you saw not, uh, a fundamental flaw in the Patriots team. I don't know how talented they are. Now they're well coached. They're tough. They tackle well, but it's not like he has the fastest players on defense. Ray Lewis, Luke Keekley ain't walking through that door. He, you know, Ed Reed ain't flying around. And Justin Fields made them look kind of stupid today. And as the game went on, it's not like Belichick doesn't adjust. He's the greatest halftime adjuster we've ever seen. There was nothing they could do. Because Fields, pure talent, running around that speed, they had no, they had no counter for it. I mean, they they just don't. There's nothing Bill can do because he just lacks the talent on that side and just really on his entire team. It's a solid team, but when they win eight or nine games at the end of the season, they will have vastly overachieved. It's why I gave Bill an apology because great coaches get their teams to overachieve. Bill used to do that with his great teams winning 12, 13 games. Remember, we'd be like, God, who's Tom throwing to? Julian Edelman, Gronk's banged up. Who are these running backs? Well, now he's doing it with a bunch of guys we don't really know. And it, it's been impressive against crappy quarterbacks, and he's excelled, but he ran into a guy. I, I'm not calling Justin Fields a good quarterback yet, but we can't argue about his 
speed is elite. And he ran around and there was nothing the Patriots could do. And he led them on drive after drive after drive and they couldn't do anything about it. And let's talk about the Patriots quarterback situation. Uh, listen, I, I'm not a Mac Jones guy. I, I, I'm not into quarterbacks like that in the first round. I There was a draft where Christian Ponder and Jake Locker were drafted really high. So I wouldn't say Mac Dr Jones is the most overdrafted quarterback of all time. But when you look at the crew of guys that he gets compared to, Kirk Cousins, like if he ever turned into a good player, Cousins, Jimmy Garoppolo, those type players, none of those guys sniffed being a first-round quarterback, let alone the 15th overall pick in the draft. And as you saw when Zappi came in, now Zappi threw a terrible pick at the end of the game. Just like Cooper Rush and Dak, I'm not acting like Zappi is just immediately going to be a better player. He may or may not be. Who knows? The more you play, the harder it becomes. But I don't think Mac Jones, I don't even think he's a top, I don't think he's a starting quarterback. I look at Mac Jones like a backup quarterback, especially when he thinks he turns into Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and tries to ad lib on the fly. It's like, Mac, that is not your game. And the reason Bill Belichick went to Bailey Zappi immediately, and you saw on the sideline, Mac goes, I'm out. It's because I can't have you, if I'm Bill, running around like you're Josh Allen because you're going to throw picks. You are going to do stupid shit because you don't have the physical attributes. And here's the other thing. You do not need to be, you know, Bill Polian to see the physical attributes in Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones. There is no difference. They physically move about the same. Their arms, you know, their arm strength is, is basically identical. You could argue Bailey Zappi even has a stronger arm. And where was Bailey Zappi drafted? In the first round? Hell no. He was a fourth round pick. So I understand Belichick, who's not always consumed with the value in the draft. No one historically has cared less about where he drafted a player, when he liked a player. And sometimes it's worked out and sometimes it's been tragic mistakes. Uh, in, in terms of how good the player was for where he was drafted. But you can't tell me when you watch Mac Jones play and you watch Bailey Zappi play, I mean, they literally look just like each other. You see difference in talent. There isn't any. Mac Jones just isn't that talented. And the thing that he hung his hat on coming into the NFL was like, ultimate game manager, ready to go. And I, I said this when I talked about the draft. There is no such thing as just an unlimited high floor, like a can't bust quarterback. Uh, uh, just this guy for sure is a 10-year starter. If that was the case, teams would never miss. That is not the way football works. And you immediately see, I'm not saying Bill is turning on Mac Jones, but I think he realizes, Mac, I, I drafted you to be a game manager, bro. You have to understand when Tom Brady started back in the day in 2001, 2002, 2003, before Tom Brady became, I don't know, an MVP-level player, he just managed the game. Now, part of it, unlike Mac and even Bailey Zappi, Tom couldn't run around, but Tom just did what he was told to do. That's what Bill wants his quarterback to do. When I tell you to throw it to the left side on this play, I don't want you to scramble around and throw it to the right side. I don't want you to do a 360 in the pocket, scramble right, and tell the guy to go deep. That's not the way we're playing. That's not the way we're built, and that's not the way you're built. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson, they get to do that. You do not because you're just simply not good enough to do that, and when you try, it's going to be a disaster 99% of the time. You saw it with Bailey Zappi. He tried to make some plays late in the game. Now, they were down big, and what happened? It didn't turn out well. When you don't have the physical attributes and you try to make the plays that the elite guys make, it usually does not turn out well in the NFL because you are at a disadvantage when you play outside the scheme of the offense. And to me, that's what Mac Jones was doing tonight. He's like trying to prove, you know, he, I know he got the Pro Bowl nod, and I, I refuse to go through it. I do think there's a chance. Now, granted, a lot of people go to Pro Bowls because other people drop out. He's the worst Pro Bowl quarterback in the history of the Pro Bowl. Uh, and I'm not trying to take shots at Mac. Like, Mac is an NFL player. I just view him more as a backup than, uh, than I think what people – kind of got in their mind he was going to be last year. And I'm just glad that Bailey Zappi has come in and you just realize, like, there is just no difference in these two players. On the flip side, 
this guy's a long way to go. And, and I'm biased. I liked him a lot coming out of college. Uh, but, and listen, there are some major flaws. As a pastor, there are just some fundamental things that sometimes he doesn't see some stuff. Sometimes you go like, is this just a running back playing quarterback? And then there are times when he makes a throw, it's like, hell yeah, that's what I want. Hell yeah, that's the Justin Fields that I thought was going to be a top 10 draft pick. And you saw tonight, one, his running is elite. Now, I don't draft a quarterback to be a runner, right? This isn't the Navy offense. But in, in let's say, modern football, mobility is a big deal. And I like quarterbacks, mobile quarterbacks. And this is what I will say about Lamar. Kyler, too, that have a pretty good understanding as a runner not to take big hits. Like, I, I saw it firsthand with Trey Lance. Trey Lance doesn't have a good feel for running around, avoiding hits. And I'm not even talking about the play that he broke his ankle. He just wasn't comfortable in space. Justin Fields is a blue-chip five-star guy who went to Georgia and then he went to Ohio State. So he's been practicing against the best of the best. He has a good understanding when he's running around how to get out of bounds, how to slide, just how to get on the ground. So to me, that's a big positive. And then from an arm strike standpoint, it's pretty special. Now there's a touch. There are some stuff that he still has a long way to go. But let's let's remove uh, Mooney, who you know is a pretty good player, and let's look at his other two targets, guys that he throws to all the time. Dante Pettis, who the 49ers once drafted, I think high in the second round. Royal bust. They, they cut, and he bounced around. He's actually been making some plays for him. Nikhil Harry made a play tonight. Well, where did Nikhil Harry come from? The first round, Bill Belichick got rid of him. Like, those are his, th that's his, like, uh, Debo Samuel and DK Metcalf. Dante Pettis and Nikhil Harry. Now, I understand that the Bears historically have struggled to put together good offensive weaponry, that they have a pretty good feel for figuring out how to find defensive players. You know, sign Julius Peppers, draft Brian Urlacher, Peanut Tillman, Michael Singletary. They, they can figure out that side of the ball. They have to, to give this guy a chance. I, If you said, bet your life, is he going to become some Pro Bowl player? I wouldn't do that. But if you told me that they invest heavily this offseason to getting him help, you know, Komet's not bad. He's probably a really good number two. Get him a star tight end. Get him a couple, you know, more impactful wideouts. Get him some offensive line help. Maybe he'll have a chance because you can't watch that. If you just watch Zappy and Mac Jones and you watch Justin Fields and you went, if you were a GM and you were a head coach, listen, I, all I've known, heard about Fields, good guy, hard worker, smart, really likes football. This guy's not playing Call of Duty all night like some quarterbacks. Now, that, that's a shot at Kyler. And in fairness to Kyler, he's a much better player than Justin Fields. He's a much more natural quarterback. But Justin... If he puts in the effort and they do surround him with, with talent, at, at least he's got a shot. Because you can't watch that and go, yeah, I, I'd want to work with that. Like, that's what you want to work with. Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, as a scout texts me tonight, are we sure the Patriots even have a quarterback? Now, I'm not sure the Bears do either. But at least they got, you know, some clay to attempt to mold. Isn't that the job of these coaches? These offensive coordinators in the league are all making seven figs. These head coaches are making seven, eight, nine million dollars. Those are the first time head coaches. Then obviously the top head coaches are making 12 to 18. Like this is, coach these guys up. Isn't that your job? Or are you just going to sit inside the film room and just click, 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 click all day in, in the dark and, and eat Cheetos and sunflower seeds? Or are we going to work with this guy? I'd, I'd want to work with Justin Fields because what did we talk about after the Thursday night game against the commanders? He has toughness, which is a must quality if you want to be a good quarterback. We know that Fields is tough. So he has that right away. No one questions that. Needs to work on some touch passing, but as you've seen with Josh Allen, and I'm not comparing him to Josh Allen, my point is it is an improvable skill. What do the Bills do? They went out and they got him a lot of help. Now we'll see. It's weird because Ryan Poles and the guys with the Bears were not the group that drafted him. So anytime that, hap anytime that happens, you, you just never know. And from just, you know, seeing headlines and stuff, I, I wouldn't uh, – I wouldn't feel great that they're all in on the guy. I know they've said some positive things, but I, I'd still be a little leery from what I've heard in the grapevine. But, I mean, what the hell else are their options? I mean, to me, I would double down on this guy for next year and just see what happens because Fields is showing signs of life here for a team that, let's face it, like the Patriots, does not have that much talent.